it's working with nature and it's um how would you say it's very grounding you know everything in nature takes time there's nothing instant about it so you you learn to slow down and you have to go at nature's pace it's it's not a job it's kind of a vocation i think farming is i'm uh, rosalyn o'reilly uh, we're here on uh, my farm in um, Castle Fergus, Quinn in County Clare, on the banks of the River Rhine. I farm 65 acres here of my own and I rent another 15 uh, from a neighbour. We have a mixture of very good limestone land and also some heavy land along the banks of a river here behind me. I took over the farm when I came back from Egg College. Initially, my parents were hesitant and they thought that I should go be a sensible young lady and go and get a job in the bank. <laughs> but I had other ideas. <laughs> so I was a budding farmer from a young age. I was always out, but, um, I was out with my dad. Um, I had my little, um, my little bucket and spade for going to the hinch <laughs> and I'd be out feeding the calves with that. <laughs> I don't know, it's genetics I suppose. <laughs> Why does a dog bark, I suppose, or why does... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but when I came home from my college, I was all enthusiasm. And at the time, it was the RBI index was all the rage. So I decided anyway that I was going to turn the whole thing upside down and I was going to breed on the RBI index. So I did. And I, can't, I don't recall the names of the bulls because they didn't make any uh, lasting impact on the herd. The first few calves were born and they were, well, indifferent looking models. That every one of them looked different and he said mm, that's not a good sign and they all looked different one was white the other was black and another one had spots and so he said if you are going breeding cattle he said on paper he said and you expect to sell them to somebody he said well you better hope he said that you'll sell them by post and that they'll never come to see them that that was a what was a lightning bolt moment for me anyway <laughs> and I have never forgotten it <laughs> I'm milking 55 pedigree registered Holstein cows here. They're averaging around 9,000 kilos of milk with approximately 700, rolling average of 700 kilos of milk solids. I like to breed a medium sized, robust cow with good feet and legs, good udder, good locomotion, nothing fancy. She would, you wouldn't take her to a show, but I'd be all the time looking at longevity. It's very important. Right now I'm actually milking cows here and they're on their 8th, 9th tin lactation. That has big benefits for sustainability. You're not turning over large numbers of animals. You, you, you get to have a, to milk a mature herd. And therefore you get the high yields of volume and mix solids. Well, I have limited land base, so therefore I have to be as efficient as possible with my limited resources. So I need to be having these kind of animals. So that the cow that does that for me is the Holstein Friesian cow. There is nothing to touch her. There are classified herd. I think down the years that has brought a lot of benefits to my herd. Classification is independent confirmation scoring of all the animals in the herd. I always look forward to the day the classifier comes. You get a detailed report on each animal. You look at that report then and you can analyze it and you can see whatever particular things that you know she's fallen down on. And I base all my breeding decisions on, on that like. You'd look at the look at the different bulls that are out there then to see if you can correct that problem. And it, it does work. You can see it, it's living proof walking around it every day. Right now I have about 12 excellent cows and 25 VGs out of a herd of 55 and I'd, I'd be thinking I have a few more on the production line. The, the, over the years, I've got a few diamond awards from the IHFA. That's for a cow that classifies excellent and has more than 3,000 kilos of protein in her lifetime. So I, I have a few of those and I got one there lately. So there's one here with us today in the field. I'm very proud of that. You know, for, for a small herd of cows that have been great, started from being graded up, to get to that level, like, it's great satisfaction involved. 
Well, now we'll go and we'll have a look at this cow here. She's my Diamond Award winning cow. This cow is classified excellent, 91 points. Our total life prime production to date is seven and a half thousand kilos of milk solids. She's a sound, functional animal. Nice hard top on her. Wonderful capacity. A lovely, beautiful temperament. Lovely quality odor. For a cow that has worked so hard, her odor is still in very good condition. This cow is 13 years old. She's in her ninth lactation. Her cell count is still perfect. Her feet have never been trimmed. Here we have a daughter of the Ramos cow. So this cow is just over 10 years old. She's another high production cow. She's classified excellent. Anybody who thinks that you can't have a high production cow that'll last, well, you can. So this cow has a lovely odor, very good rump structure again, very good locomotion. Her feet have never been trimmed at any stage in her career. And you can see she's medium sized, very robust, you know, that, that, that functional type and the, the classification going through again onto the next generation. And there you go, there's the results. This is a homebred herd here. Uh, and I've never bought anything other than a, a stock bull. I have a small herd, so I can't be experimenting with, it might be fashionable, but I can't be experimenting. I need to be using daughter proven bulls, you know, that have the ability to transmit. So if you can have your own herd and have a bios, that level of biosecurity, and everybody has that within their own herd, they have what it takes to breed a very good herd of cows themselves. They're an economic animal to have. It makes financial sense not to be all the time chopping and changing. Registration is important because of the the assurance that it gives people. Like all, all the calves are registered here. They are genomically tested and their parentage verified for the people who buy them. When you see a pedigree research for a young animal like these heifers here and you see three and four generations are very good and excellent written on it, it means, you know, that these animals are good transmitters, that that line, that cow family are very good transmitters of the important characteristics. I'd say that probably one of the best things you could do would be to join the Irish Holstein Friesian Association. There's a, a, a lot of very enthusiastic members of the IHFA and they have a vast amount of knowledge and they'd be happy to share it with you. We've adopted the new technology of low emission slurry spreading. That has a big benefit for, from the environment and also from a financial point of view. You don't need the same amount of artificial nitrogen. And of course the neighbours are very happy with me as well. It's all injected into the ground. So I've invested a lot of money in uh, extra slurry storage. So now I utilise that slurry in April and May, peak growing months. So I feel that I get much greater results. Well, my location here, I'm, my farm is bounced on one side by the River Rhine. So I am acutely aware of water quality. You know, it's an ever-present issue every day of the year. So we have to be very careful with everything that we do here. One section of the farm is in a special area of conservation. No animals ever enter into that place. It's completely fenced off. It, well, it's a haven for all the local pheasants, foxes, We've got some kingfishers in there. We've got herons, we've got swans. It's just completely left to nature. Trees fall down, they, they just die off and new ones grow. But uh, it's an amazing place to go into, like it's almost like you were in a rainforest. Definitely we can improve further. 
We can also do a lot of uh, stuff about our carbon emissions. I think, well, for a lot of dairy farmers, I think there's, there's a lot of potential there for people to generate their own power. Now with the technology, you can store the power in the batteries and you can use it yourself. And I think we have the potential to get down to zero carbon emissions. So I think that's entirely doable, like. So I'd, I'd really be interested in, in doing something like that. And, and so would a lot, of, a lot of my colleagues that I know would be as well. Well, I think farming is a profession of hope. So you have to try. <laughs> you can't give up, you have to soldier on anyway. My name is Rosalind O'Reilly and I'm a member of the Irish Holstein Frisian Association.